Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy Dollars. Welcome to the Gaming with Dollars YouTube channel. And I'm going to be checking out the Gotham Knights building a brand new Gotham City with 400 years of history. It's a nine minute video. I guess it's going to show us the city, probably throw in some free roaming aspects. So listen, man, I'm already leaning towards buying it. But after watching this video, I'll probably give y'all uh, an official decision on what I'm going to do. But I'm probably going to get it, man. Like, who am I kidding, bro? You know what I'm saying? Ain't a lot of new games that's coming out. We got The Last of Us remake, but it's like how many times I'm gonna play that game, the first one, and like they didn't really do too much to it. We got Ragnarok God of War, which I'm definitely buying. So um yeah, like other than that, ain't really too many games. Oh, Mo Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2. So it's like three games I'm buying that's gonna come out soon, and this might be on it. You know what I'm saying? So let's check it out. In the 1650s, five families left Europe, eventually landing on the rain-swept islands Wains, that pepper the, the mouth of what would one day be called Gotham River. Those families, the Waynes, the Cobblepots, the Elliots, the Arkhams, and the Canes wow. would build a colonial fort together. The Canes, so the is that like a Jonathan of Crane's in the area. family? Gotham City was born. The city quickly spread beyond its original bounds, developing five boroughs, and in each, one of those five founding families would take root. In the early days, the Canes established themselves on Gotham's natural harbour, now known as Historic Gotham, tying the family to their new country's military might, building ships and weapons of war. By the 1850s, Gotham had become a major trade hub, helped along by the industrialist cobblepots and their smoke-belching Southside steel mills. Gotham continued to transform over time. In the 1920s, the Elliots took hold of the 20th century's newest means of control, mass media, and built downtown Gotham in a new Art Deco image. By the 1960s, Gotham had truly become a patchwork of industry and architecture. The Arkhams settled in North Gotham, building their famous asylum. Arkham Asylum? Yes, it's in the game, and no, it's not as you've previously seen it. The it's Waynes, the game. meanwhile, built their billions in New Gotham, helping advance the town into a new technological age. Which brings us to the present day, and the Gotham you'll be exploring as Batman's protégés in Gotham Knights. An open world as soaked in history as it is by neon light and vigilante-friendly shadow. Warner Brothers Games Montreal created that history early in production, a whole new timeline for a whole new version of Gotham City. And it isn't merely window dressing. Dope. The timeline informs everything from the plot, to the gameplay, to the game's biggest mystery, the Court of Owls conspiracy. The team didn't just build an open world to play in. There's people! It's truly trying to build a city. Wow. We didn't have that in the Arkham games. Regular civilians walking around NPCs. Key to this take on Gotham are those five boroughs and the worldview of the families that historically controlled them. So for us, the five boroughs, you know, it started with the families. The families moved there, they built imposing structures within those districts. So then we build around that to where the identity for those districts really is based off of the that personal family. Within those boroughs, of the, family. the team tries to tell stories without simply having someone speak them out loud. If you visit a city in real life, it's hard to tell some of that history. So because we're making a game, really what we want to do is kind of obviously reveal some of I that I like stuff. that. So you can control where the satellite kind of puts stuck you? stuck in time, you know, like even something as, you know, kind of generic as construction, like it becomes interesting when it's it's halted construction or it's it's now abandoned and overgrown or it's ruins, you know, all those things are more interesting for the player than you know just a modern city. So we tried to have a lot of those areas where it's almost stuck in time so the player can really experience what it was back then a little bit too and see how the city evolved. The team has historical and gameplay basis for every new environment. Take the cauldron built into the Cobblepot's lower Gotham area. We always would like to tell a story with every borough, and there's one specific one that is not necessarily related to the family, but is an effect of some of the projects that those families undertook, which was a mining operation that happened in a riverbed. So they decided to wall off two sides of a portion in the water and they dredged it for mining operations. It would attract workers for the mining operation. It was low-cost housing. It remained like actually a slum. 
the cauldron's history is written into its walls, with tumble-down buildings and cramped, unplanned streets, all set in the shadow of the more prosperous districts around it. But all of this is a distinct gameplay choice too. This spot is kind of like a transition area between the financial district and the south side. So we have like two very different themes while being in a third theme that is very organic, has a complete different way for the player to navigate over. It's that a looks lot fun. More parkouring. So the player always has the choice to pick the best tool and the best navigation verb to be as efficient as possible. I like and, that. Uh, with different neighborhoods that will give you different experiences. This interplay of history and gameplay can be seen across the city. The once beautiful Robinson Park is a symbol of the city's decay, but it's also an open space where your usual stealth tactics may no longer work in the same way. The enormous Elliott Center is a literally gilded reminder of the family patriarch, complete with a museum exhibit about the family inside. And it's also a complex, multi-layered bit of vertical level design built to house the Mr. Freeze boss battle later in the game. And it's not just that timeline that acts as history here either. While this is a new take on Gotham, it includes many references to the comic books it's drawing from. Of course, there are buildings you'll know, right down to deep cut references like Noonan's Sleazy Bar from Garth Ennis' Hitman series, but the very fabric of Gotham itself acts as an easter egg in places. Perhaps most interesting is that this Gotham has a public history and a secret history. We already know the game will centre on the Court of Owls, a shadowy, manipulative group born of the founding families. Gotham itself will reflect that conspiratorial past too. One of the things that we love about the Court of Owls, aside from the fact that you know it's a, it's a new, fresh addition to the Batman canon, is that they represent a threat that is so embedded and so intrinsic to Gotham City that even Batman doesn't know about it. And the nice. notion of a threat that is so intimately tied to a city that he considers to be his city, that he knows like the back of his hand that he's been patrolling for you know literally decades at this point. That's a very intimidating and scary idea. With that in mind, what we knew is that we needed to give you a sense of Gotham's history in order to be able to show all the ways in which the court. I like is the design that, of the Court of Owls that too. That feeling that Gotham is kind Looks of an dope. adversary, and that Court of Owls is the embodiment of that, the personification of it. The phrase commonly used at the studio for this is that they didn't just build up, creating those hugely visible landmark buildings and stories for every new district, but that they also built down. We started to imagine how the form of the city could be affected by that. Because the and Court of Owls is under Gotham, so that makes sense. And urban geography to the city, going all the way back to like the late 1600s. And then we started to think, okay, well, what were the major events in history that would have that they would have reacted to, you know, is it the Revolutionary War, is it the kind of exploitation of the West, like the building of the railroads, like all of these ideas became part of that conversation and allowed us to kind of build layers of accreted history. And, and we built it up and we built it down. Like we said, okay, what's buried under the city? Like, what are the hidden secrets that you can find in the course of investigating the Court of Owls? Naturally, the team isn't talking too much about what those buried secrets might be, but we see hints of it as we're shown Gotham's open world. A seemingly nondescript building might be a gang hideout, which leads to a tunnel system that brings you into an exit into Gotham that you would never have guessed at, for example. We want the Court of Owls to feel like they're involved in everything. If you were to go to a major city in North America, like often they'll build a city on top of another one. Like yeah. Chicago, like they had the fire, they just built a on city top, on top of, of, it of a city. It's not worth like rebuilding, destroying and rebuilding. So what the undergrounds allow us to do is kind of reveal that cross section of the city. So we have areas like that where you, you know, you drop in, you keep going and you see things that you didn't know were there that you didn't know the city was Kill built on top of. <laughs> and I think that's a really cool element. We try to allow the player to see kind of behind the scenes of the city. The cutscenes look surface dope. And, you know, as well as seeing it from up high from the bigger landmarks. The result of all this work is that this take on Gotham aims to feel like a legitimate place, not just a sandbox for spandex crime fighters. I ain't gonna We've lie. Heard before that this the more that I watch this, the more I'm dying to play it now. I can't even lie to you. It's the largest <laughs> Gotham ever made in game form. But that's not what the developers are proud of. Yeah, this is bigger than the Arkham Knight Gotham. It is. I think it was only three islands, right? We made a very big Gotham City, but what I think is really unique to Gotham Knights is the density of it. Sometimes I will be searching Some for something. Sometimes bigger isn't always better, though. You know, like you can have a big city, but it's like nothing to do in it. There's nothing interesting in it. One thing that I'm starting to hope that we get into with video games is 
We want to be able to go inside every building, guys. Like, that's what we want for the next Grand Theft Auto. I want to be able to go into at least most of these buildings, like the floors. Man, if there's an apartment, like, I want to be able to break into it, man. Like, I don't know, bro. That's just me. But I want that. Thing or fighting a crime and not realize how close to me something else is happening that I'm going to want to interact with afterwards or before. There's just such a, a depth of nooks and crannies to explore inside our city and I think that that's really unique to Gotham Knights. The idea of a Gotham packed with references, miniature histories and sinister mysteries is alluring. After all, this is the promise of a town with real backstory, that it's not just the people living there who'll help tell the story, but the city itself. Gotham yeah. has been many things. But people don't realize Gotham is a character itself. You ever watched the show Gotham? I didn't get to finish it. I was into it at first. I, I didn't finish it, but I want to. Gotham itself, it shows you that the city itself is a character. You feel me? Not just the villains and the heroes. The city is actually a character. To many people, it's appeared in comics, movies, and gaming worlds. It's been reinvented repeatedly, traveling through time with us from block color 40s issues of Detective Comics to the gray monoliths of Christopher Nolan's trilogy. But all of those versions of Gotham have been snapshots of a city in its current form. Perhaps the most interesting thing about Gotham Knight's version is that we won't just see the city as it is, but hopefully learn what it's been. That's dope. We'll be covering Gotham Knights and offering it. All right, guys. Well, yeah, I'm getting the game. I made my mind up already. I'm going to get the game. You know, the city looks dope. I want to explore it. I want to run around, uh, parkour through the city. You know, the little fast travel thing with the satellite, even though they say it's from the watchtower. If y'all don't know what DC, uh, the watchtower is like the little headquarters that's in space and it does the boom tube shit. So that's why um, Robin can do that. But like, yeah, like I'm excited for the game now. You know, the gameplay is still going to make it break me as far as the combat. Like if the combat is fun, even though I know that I enjoy the Arkham combat better than anything, you know, the Arkham and the Spider-Man combat is like beautiful for me. So I feel like if you got something that works, do not depart from that. But listen, I'm still going to give the game a chance, man. You know, like... I like the attention to detail, the environment. You know, we got regular NPCs walking through. We didn't have that in the Arkham City or um, Arkham Knight game. You know, it was just the villains. You could fight them. But to see actual people, that's dope. You know, it shows you that the city is alive. And uh, I do. It looks fun, the motorcycles, too. So I want to try out the motorcycles. That looks fun. And um, I still feel like the graphics could look a little bit better. Like, you know. I want the graphics to look way better, you know, but let's see if it, how it looks when I actually play the game. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe. I'm going to drop another video talking about Fortnite. They uh, teased the Dragon Ball Z event coming out, and I'm excited for that. Also, I will be putting up gameplay soon for you guys. All right. Shipboy Dollars. I'm out.